Hello. Thank, thank you for being here. It was really, really tough for me. I don't know if it was the same for you, but I mean, I understood why this is a one-day conference and not five days. OK, we're going to talk about uh, OrientDB and uh, its new uh, geospatial capabilities. This is my uh, GitHub account. You'll find all the code here. Let's start coding. What I'm going to do is very simple. It's two, two, fold, two, two parts, actually. Uh, we will take some geospatial data. We will load them into OrientDB uh, using a simple Java program. Then we will see a simple front end to display these geospatial data on a Google Maps application. We will add some uh, graph information, so um, trivially some people with connection between people, so friendship, relationships, and so on. And then we will do some queries together uh, using geospatial indexes and graph capabilities together to see how uh, real world sh scenarios like connected data and physical spatial data can be mixed together. Okay, let's start. Oh, too many microphones. Voila. Let's start from a simple importer. Uh, no, let's start from scratch. Let's install OrientDB. What we need is just a couple of files. You can download it from the website. This is OrientDB Community Edition and the geospatial module. You can download it from, uh, from Maven. It's very easy. Uh, you, can, you can find everything on orientdb.com slash download. This is Apache 2 license, so you can just download it, use it in your production software without paying any fees. It's completely free. So let's see how to install OrientDB. Just take the targz file, unzip, take the geospatial module, copy it in the lib directory, just because it's not built into the normal package, and that's it. This is the install procedure. Now let's open a shell, uh, clear, okay. And let's do cd orientdb community Oh, what's this? Oh, no. I'm in, a, in the bad folder. CD orientdb community slash bin dot slash server dot sh. Let's start an SH file. Three, two, one. Orientdb is up and running. This is the installation, nothing more. No Docker, no fancy things, just common line install. I didn't install anything. You can just drop the directory and that's it. You can also copy paste a database directory from a server to another one. Everything is a file or a directory. It's ever very, very simple. OrientDB has a built-in uh, web server. So when it starts, it also um, exposes a, a web tool to, to manage it. So if you go to localhost 2480 slash studio slash index, you will see this. Let's create a new database. Let's call it test, no, root, root, so the root password. And here we are. OK. Now. We have a database. Now we need a, a, a domain model. Our domain model will be made of a few classes. Can you, okay. Can you read from down there? Okay, great, thank you. We will use following classes. Poi, that is point of interest. Natural, that is just a, a park or a natural, uh, let's say, um, area on a map. Person, so just people on the map, and friend of, that is friendship relationship. Let's see how to create the domain in our database. Create class boy extends v. Okay, I just created my point of interest class. I didn't, I didn't do create table. I did create class, and I did extends v. In OrientDB, we do not have tables. We do not have collections. We have classes. We have a class hierarchy. Poi, point of interest, extends V. It can do insert into poi, no, no, name, values, uh, foo. This could run fine in Oracle or in MySQL. This is no SQL or NTDB, it runs as well. Or NTDB uses SQL as its main query language. Okay, we have our uh, point of interest. I can do select from poi. I can do select from V 
because poi extends v, this is a polymorphic query, so I, I will obtain the point as well. Let's drop it. Delete, delete, vertex, poi. Let's delete everything. Okay. This is my point of interest class. Now let's create some schema. Uh, you saw that I inserted uh, a new record with a name, but I did not declare that this class has a, a name attribute. We can do it, anyway. We can do create class poi. Uh, no, uh, sorry, create property poi.name string. And say the name has to be a string. In this case, I would do poi location embedded o point. O point. My location will be a point, a geographical point. OrDB provides some, let's execute it, some built-in classes for uh, for geospatial um, capabilities. You can see ge or geometry collection, or line string, or multi-line string, or multi-point, point, polygon, and so on. In this case, I define as a uh, in, in my schema that the uh, boy class uh, here it is has an embedded pro an embedded property that is an O point. So I have a document that is a vertex as well, with a, a property that is another document. This document will have an embedded property that is coordinates. Let's see it. Okay. Um, o point. Okay. That is a, an embedded list of double values. So I have a document that contains another document that contains a list of simple values. So it's a pure document database. Now let's start inserting data into this class. Let's do it using Java. Uh, too many things here. Let me drop something and start from scratch. And here as well. OK. Uh, here we are. Let's enlarge a little bit. The Much better, I think. OK. OK. This is just a, a simple Java main. I need two libraries. Uh, in my POM, I just imported Apache Commons CSV to read a CSV file and OrientDB graph, GraphDB to connect to OrientDB. What we will import is these files. Okay, this is my CSV file with points of interest. It's very simple, it has four columns. WKT, an ID, a name, and a type. Uh, WKT is just a shape, in this case it's a point two coordinates, longitude, latitude. Then there's an ID, then there is a, a name and a type of point of interest. Uh, does anybody of you know what WKT stands for? Uh, we are under the average. Uh, it's maybe the first time I do this presentation, and every time just one or two people raise their hand. WKT stands for well-known text. Don't know why they call this that way. Nobody knows it. Anyway, uh, this is just a string, of course, in my CSV file. Let's start reading it. No, now, first thing to do is just read the string of the file. So reader, reader equals uh, Java IO, OK, equals new input stream reader from uh, main, main class, get class loader dot get resources stream old style uh, let's call the poi dot csv I take it from the class path it's just here okay and let's start reading from this so reader um, sorry csv uh, parser parser this is uh, playing Apache Commons csv equals csv format dot default it's very easy uh, Apache Commons has a default parser for CSV, it's very easy. Parse this reader. Oh. That's it. Mm, just a line of code. This is the good thing of working in Java, you have almost everything. And now let's do parser iterator. Okay. While iterator has next, iterator next and let's do um, row equals create local variable row dot get uh, okay, let's do um, import 
row row. That's it. Let's create this method. Now let's see what ha what, what happens. Um, okay. Dot get zero. Let's read the first the first column that is just the WKT and see if it works. Okay. Let's run it. Hope it's okay. Okay, I'm reading my CSV. Now I, I need four columns, actually. I need row get zero, that is the WKT. Then I need the, uh, it was name, it was in position two, and type, that is in position three. I will ignore the, the ID in position one. I don't need it. Okay, now let's import it into OrientDB. Let's see how to do that. Um, we have two ways to do this. Of course, we need a connection. So let's see how to connect with OrientDB using a native Java driver. Actually, you have two ways to connect OrientDB, with a nat na native driver, driver or with uh, an HTTP REST interface. We'll see both. So orient graph, graph equals new orient graph, remote localhost. Uh, what's the name of this database? It was uh, okay. mm, test. Okay, test. Admin, admin. Oop. Admin. Okay, this is all we need. Now we have a, an active connection. At the end, we'll just do graph dot shutdown. That's it. It's very easy. The, the APIs, uh, ORDB APIs, are very very high level. Now we just pass this uh, graph instance to my import row method, and there we will do all the work. We can do it in two ways. We can do graph at vertex um, class or, uh, boy, and I will I will obtain a vertex vertex equals, and this is a, an orient vertex. Then I can do. Uh, graph.commit, or it is transactional. So it's not just eventually something, it's transactional. You can do commit, rollback, and so on, like in relational databases. And setting properties on my vertices is like doing vertex.set property. Uh, no, too many. Property, name, name, oh, name, oh, no. Type, type, and so on. And I can also create a document set latitude, longitude, and set it into a property called uh, location. There's another way to do this. This is the high level way, the, the easy way for programmers. We can also execute queries. We can do graph.comment, new or command SQL. Again, OrientDB uses SQL, dot execute. And my statement will be, uh, okay, insert into, um, Boy, set name equals um, type equals and uh, what's oh, comma location equals and here let's do some magic uh, st geom from text and this is it. Or it be provides some high level geospatial functionalities. One of the first one we see is this one, geom from text. This translates well-known text, so this, in indexable and real objects inside OrientDB. So we will just pass a string, and OrientDB will convert this string in a point, in, in an O-point object. Let's do it. Let's pass the name, the type, and the WKT, and that's it. And then let's commit at every record, but we can do it uh, we, can, we can do it batches if we, if we want. Okay, let's run it. Oh, first of all, let's make sure that there's nothing in the database. Select from boy, there's nothing, that's fine. And let's run it. Ooh. Okay, it's doing something. Oh, what's going on? Parse exception. Ah, what's going on? Ah, yes. Ah, uh, let's see. <laughs> you can guess what's happening here. Exactly. 
this is why I created the iterator here and I did not do a simple for each. We have to, to discard the header. Iterator, next. Let's discard the first row. Let's try again. I didn't log anything, my fault, but it will take you know, a few seconds. It's just uh, a few hundred thousand points. Okay, done. Let, let's see what happened. Select from point. Ooh. And here we are. These are my points of interest. Let's enlarge it a little bit. Oh, no. Okay. Now, every point, actually, let's do a limit one. Oh, limit one to make it clear. Every point is represented as a, a row in a table, but actually it's not a row. It's if in this raw representation, it's a, like a JSON. So you have some properties like name, like type, and you have a location that is an embedded JSON that has coordinates that is an embedded list, and so on. So it's a complex object. You can do things like that from poi, where name equals, I don't know, empty or something. And you can do things like select from poi, where location dot um, coordinates zero. So the first coordinates equals to this one. Let's see if it works. What's going on? No idea. I did it. Sorry? Or Dines. Oh, much better. Here we are. Thank you. So you can query using dot notation inside embedded objects. That's pretty clean, pretty easy, and it just works. Now let's do something more. Let's index these properties. Let's create index um, boy dot location on poi location, so this is the index name, this is the index name, this is the class I'm indexing, this is the property I'm indexing, special engine lucene, that's it. Create a geospatial index using lucene engine. This will take just a few seconds, that's it, it indexed all my database. Now those coordinates, those um, O point objects, are indexed on a geospatial index. So I can do um, complex queries on that. Let's make an example. Uh, no, okay. This is a new database. I have a, an already created database. Let's switch to another one. This geo database, admin, admin. Here I have some bookmarks and some other information. Actually, I, am in, I already imported the POIs, so select from POI. But I also imported natural, natural with the same exact, exact same syntax. But natural are shapes, so not single points, but polygons. In this case, I have O, I don't know if you can see it, I have O polygon, not O point. Now we can query them. We can do things like, okay, querying based on distance. So, for example, we can do select from, ooh, okay, much better. Select from point of interest where the distance, st distance sphere is a built-in function of the location of this point of interest uh, is less than one kilometer from a particular point translated to an actual point with the st geom from text. So I'm using two functions. With this one, I'm converting a string to a point a real point, and then with the sphere, I'm calculating the distance between the two. Let's see, and add in our condition, so name is not null. Let's see what it is. This is Torre degli Asinelli, here in Bologna. Okay, it took milliseconds to execute, of course. We can do more, of course. We can do uh, queries based on shapes. So, for example, we can do select from natural Okay, okay, much better. Select from natural, the natural have areas where the location of the natural, that is a shape, contains a point. Let's see what this location is. This is Parco Giardini Margherita here in Bologna. Okay, oh, that's fine. We have, you can see it's 
pretty fast. 100 milliseconds to do all the round trip. So the HTTP call, the index query, the response, the JSON parsing, the, the, the representation. Index, so fast. Okay, so the import was, was easy. Uh, how many of you are Java developers? How many of you are JS, JavaScript, no JS, think developers? Okay, I also have the JavaScript version of this. That's pretty similar. I just would like to show you the, the API to do the, the insert into Oriented.db. Here we are. Okay. Mm, let's enlarge it a little bit. Okay, this is a complete version. Everything is on GitHub, of course. I create a database, I import, first of all, orientjs, that is the DB driver for orientdb. Then I do, uh, where is that? Okay, db equals new all databases, all database, passing the host, the username, password, and all I need to connect to the database. And then I do db.insert into class name, set JSON. Name equals data.name, that is data that's passed to the function. Location equals uh, a raw expression, that is the geom from text, what I did. And type equals data type. So the native APIs for the languages are very tightly related to the language. So JSON to insert documents in JS. Uh, real objects in Java that you can, where you can do set property, get property, save, commit, rollback, without having to deal with statements if you don't want, and so on. So, pretty simple. Now let's go to the, the real fun. Let's display these data on a map. Let's add some graph information. Going back to data for a moment, select from um, POI. Okay. You can see that every record in OriantDB has a record ID. This is not just a number. This is actually two numbers, but just a detail. Uh, the first num number represents a file on the file system. So if I say 33, I know that this record is in the file number 33. This second number represents the physical position of this record inside that file. So if I know this number, I can just open the file, go to a specific position and find the record. Based on this, I can build relationships. So I don't need primary keys or foreign keys. If I want to link a record from another record, I just have ins to insert the record ID as a pointer. Just to give you an idea, let's, let's do this in the, in the front end. I'll, I'll show you that. Okay, I wrote a simple application to, to, show, you, uh, to show you this. It's running inside Oriented.DB. 2480 slash UI slash index. OrinDB has a built-in web server. It's mainly for um, uh, for the REST API, but you can also set, <laughs> I mean, deploy your HTML JavaScript files inside and let it serve your content if you want. Don't do it in production, but that's fine. Okay, this application just displays a simple Google map and this place where we are, this is uh, the um, this is Bologna map, and we are exactly here. Okay, now let's do something. Uh, this application is a full client application. There's no backend, no Node.js, no Java backend, nothing. Just JavaScript, uh, Angular 2, TypeScript, nothing more. So I need a way to query OriantDB from the browser. Well, OriantDB exposes a web server to do REST calls. In OriantDB, I can do things like localhost 2480 slash command slash, I know, uh, test my former application slash com, uh, SQL, select from POI, limit one, let's say. Okay, it's asked for authentication, admin, admin. And it returns JSON, of course. That's it, I mean, I have all I need. I have to do an authenticated call, a GET request or a POST request, but it gives me JSON, I can give it to Angular 2 and display it on the map. 
Well, actually, I'll do it uh, in a slightly different way because it's a real uh, REST protocol. So if you want to do queries, you can do get operations, get calls. If you want to do insert, update, delete, so non-idempotent comments, you have to do a post or a put operation. I cannot do a post from this. I can do it from postman, of course. Postman. Do you know postman? Yeah, you do. OK. So what, we, what I will really do is this localhost command geo, OK. Authenticated, admin, admin, oops, admin. And OK, not a get, but a post. And in the body, I will pass some raw content like comment and no, select from boy, limit one. This is what I will actually do in my application. Let's test it. Send. And I get my point of interest in, in JSON. Let's see how to do it in the web, uh, web front end. Just a couple of words about this application. I have an index HTML, of course. You know that. There's almost nothing. I have a simple component that is called app component TS. It's TypeScript. Do you know TypeScript? How many of you have never heard of TypeScript? A uh, couple of people. But most of you have never used it. Well, TypeScript is just uh, JavaScript with types and with a lot more things. It's compliant with um, ECMAScript 6, so you have uh, imports, you have uh, um, template strings, you have many, many fancy things. So what I do is just have a, a bunch of buttons in my front end that is, okay, that is oh, these buttons, plus uh, latitude, longitude, that if I click on the map, I'll display them here. I will need them later. And I have, oh no, I have a little map here, a div where I'll display the map. This is just plain Google Maps, so I will do create map properties, like, oh, I thought maybe I can enlarge it a little bit. Okay. I'm creating a Google Map with latitude and longitude, I want a road map, this is the zoom level, and then new Google Maps map, on the map ID, on the map uh, element on the, on the DOM, uh, passing the properties, that's it. That's displaying the map. And then I also add a listener for the click, so that when I click here, I get the coordinates, nothing more. Then I have some buttons here. I have display people, display boys, display parks, and so on. When I click on these buttons, I have to do a query on OrientDB, get the results and display them on the map. Let's see what I want to do. Display points. Here we are. This is what I want to do. Display points of interest on the map. So, load points. Okay, this is the method that does this. Um, it just binds the controller because I need it in the callback. And then I'll do this.orient.command Select from point of interest where distance sphere from Bologna is less than 10 kilometers. Give me the first 1,000, that's fine. And then in a callback, I take the JSON result and I put it on the map using Google Maps API, nothing more. Now, this is not a built-in component. This is a service that I wrote that uses OrientDB to do the REST call. Let's see how it works. Okay, here we are. This is the Orient object. I just get a URL for OrientDB, that is common geo, it's running on the same web server, and username and password. Then I do headers and build an authorization header because OrientDB needs basic authentication to do REST queries. I pass username and password, nothing more. And then I do an HTTP post. Very simple. I take the URL that I built here. I do JSON stringify, that is exactly uh, this what we did before with uh, Postman. Okay, let's switch back here. And then I pass the callbacks to for the response. I create a promise and pass the callback. So nothing more, just do a HTTP call to OrientDB, get the results and display them on the map. Let's see what happens. 
These are the points of interest, and these are the parks. Okay, that's fine. I have data for all, e all Italy, more or less, but I'm only displaying data in Bologna. That's pretty fast. Um, Google Maps API is quite good for that. Now let's create people. Let's go to the graph part. I wrote another simple uh, procedure to insert people. Now, everything I, every time I click on a position, I get latitude and longitude updated here. I have a person name here. I insert, I don't know, um, Joy, name of person. I click on Add Person. And here it is. I have a person inserted here. What did happen in the uh, in the back? Let's see, in the back end, this is actually the front end, but that's fine. Add person. Um, no, create person. Okay. I'm just doing an insert into. Insert into person, set name equals the name I wrote here. And location is JSON of the location that is made of uh, an O point class with coordinates, latitude, and longitude, nothing more. And I use the orange service to do the same thing. So I'm doing plain insert. Let's create some more people. Let's say I want, I oh know, Frank here, and then, I oh know, Jenny here, uh, another person, and that's us Luigi as well, here, near the towers. And someone else, I oh know. Um, Johnny. Okay, let's leave here. Now, I have some people. Now I can create a graph. I can create friendship relationships. I wrote another simple API that is this button, add edge. So I click here, I choose two people, one and two, and I create an edge between the two people, a connection. So Jenny is a friend of Luigi. Let's do it, oh, no, this is what I wanted to do. Okay, let's do it for our people. Add edge from Luigi to I don't know who. Add another edge from I don't know to I don't know. And add another one. One and two. Okay, let's see what happened in OriantDB. Now, first of all, let's see what we did. Add um, edge. Edge. Okay, to create an edge, just do create edge from a record ID to another record ID. If you go back to studio and you do select from person, oops, you will see that every person has a record ID and it also has some uh, columns that contain other record IDs. They're actually physical pointers. So when I have this number, I exactly know where to look at to find the record representing the edge. And the record representing the edge inside has two more record IDs that are the two connected vertices. Now I can use these physical pointers to do traversal. So instead of doing join operations, I do traversal. I do things like select from, oh, let's enlarge it a little bit, okay. Select from, oh, person. So from person, I have all the people where name equals Luigi. Oh no. Let's see. Okay. Now I can do select out friend of. And let's expand it. Uh, let's see what happens. It gives me some record IDs. I can expand them and get other people that are my friends. Then I can find friends of friends. Then I can find Friends of friends of friends, and of friends 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 of friends. That's no problem, because deep traversal in OrientDB is a very, very cheap operation. You cannot do this in relational databases. You cannot do join, 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 because Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, they just stop working. They don't answer anymore. Graph databases are designed to do this. There is no calculation. There's physical links. Join operations are based on calculation, and they are calculated every time you execute them. Physical pointers are calculated only once, when you create them. Then there is no more calculation involved. And traversal 
and traversal cost does not depend on the database size. It just depends on the number of edges, pointers, uh, relationships you traverse. So doing this traversal on the, with the same result set on a graph of you know, 1,000 elements has the same cost as doing this on a graph of 10 billion nodes. So it scales. We can also do something more. We can do traverse out, let's say, all the outgoing edges from select from person where name equals Luigi. OK. Go down and traverse while a condition is met. For example, while depth is, le oops, depth is less than three, so three levels deep. You get Luigi, then you get his friends, then his friends of friends, and so on. You can do 3,000, 300,000, not a problem. You can do while age is less than three, I know, that's a 40. So any condition, this is like a work condition. It just um, stops you when it's, it not, it's not matched anymore. In many cases, it's very, very useful. You, in some cases, you don't know how deep you want to traverse. So this is the graph functionality. Now let's put them together. Oh, only a thing. Or in DB, this is my front end. Of course, this is nice. I have my areas, my people, connection, graphs. But OrientDB also provides some built-in functionalities to display graphs. I can do, OK, select from person. I have my graph. This is an, an interactive graph. OK. So I have people. I can click on a single vertex, see the details. In this case, I only have a name and coordinates. I can change the behavior. I don't want to show the name of the person. I want to show the record ID, location, any other attributes. I want to change the color. I don't know. Choose this one. The icon size, I don't know. Uh, choose an icon. I don't want a simple sphere. I want a person here, uh, but that's small. Okay. Okay. And save. So it's pretty useful when you have to demonstrate this to someone that doesn't know anything about your data model or, or databases in general. It's a graph. It's just a, uh, edges and vertices, balls and connections. It's very easy. Let's do some meaningful queries here. Let's exploit the power of the graph and just partial together. Oh, not this. Mm, bookmarks, this, not this. Okay. Let's find a place, first of all. No, another one. Let's see where, where Joy is. Do you remember where we put Joy? This is not common, this is a batch. It's actually two comments. Now, the first thing I do is select from person where name equals joy. OK, and this is joy with his coordinates. I bind the value to a variable called um, dollar joy. Then I use the um, just partial query to find where joy is on the map. So I do select from natural where the natural location contains joy. So joy zero, the first result in the result set, the location attribute. Let's try it. And joy is at Parco Margherita. It's extremely fast, as you can see. OK. Let's do something more complex. Let's mix things together, really. Let's find a place based on a logic. Simple use case. It's a, it's a toy, of course, but you can think about this in a real life scenario. I have two people. One is me, for example, and I am in a particular place. Let's say I'm here. I have to tell something to someone that is near, I don't know, Torre degli Asinelli. I don't know how, how to reach that person because I don't know him personally, or maybe I don't even know who he is. But maybe I know someone who knows someone who knows someone who is there. So I will do some geospatial queries based on positions, my position, and position of people who are around Torre degli Asinelli. And then I will do a shortest path, a graph algorithm to find the shortest, the, 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 the minimum number of connections to reach a people that is there. Let's do it step by step. 
First thing, oh, no, the opposite, okay. First thing I do, it for, of course, is select from person where name equals Luigi, and I find Luigi, that's fine. And I bind it to a variable that is A, the point A on the map. Then I find Torre degli Asinelli, select from point of interest where name equals Torre degli Asinelli, okay. That's not indexed. Uh, the name in this case is not indexed, but it's pretty fast. Uh, I also have full text indexing, if you need that. That's losing in inside the B. Then we do a query like find a place that I'll call B, that, no, find a person. Yes, a person. I'll call it B, that is near Torre degli Asinelli. So that is near the point of interest. So select from person where the distance of the person from the location of the boy is less than 500 meters. I also add this same value, this same distance to the projection, to have this alias, just to order by distance. So find the closest one, that's it. And then use A, so the closest person to Torre degli Asinelli, and A, me, to calculate the shortest path. So calculate the shortest path between me and that person that I don't know who is. And expand the results, so don't show me the record IDs, show me the, all the people involved. That's it. That was me. <laughs> okay, let's change something. That's joy, okay. Uh, on the map, I was, okay. I was here. Yeah, this is me. This is Torre degli Asinelli, so this query did, did not make sense. Let's try with Joy. Oh, let's see if it makes something better. Oof. That's Joy. Joy knows Frank. Frank knows me. And I'm very close to Torre degli Asinelli. That's it. So, as you can see, everything is very, very high level. The APIs, the native APIs, are high level JSON in JavaScript and plain Java objects in Java, but also with other languages. Um, shape classes are already in the database. You have functions that convert simple strings like WKT to shapes. You have simple functions like distance, like within, contains, um, and so on. So uh, intersects to query shapes. You have deep traversal at no cost. You can mix them together. You have documents, like in document databases, and you can put it all together with graph algorithms. You can do it also with um, HTTP REST APIs, so just send queries and get JSON, and write in your front end, back end, no JS, whatever you want. And all this is Apache 2 license, so you just can download it, use it in production for free, do your Great projects and let us know. <laughs> okay, that's it. Do you have any questions? Too tired. <laughs> uh, not actually, but this one you mean. Uh, it's not intended to be embedded. It's a uh, uh, component that was designed just to live inside Studio, uh, but it's open source. You can find the source code on uh, on GitHub. Um, it's D3, nothing more. In my opinion, it's much easier to do the same display with VisJS, for example. It's ten lines of code of JavaScript. Uh, it's that simple. Yes, please. Sure, I didn't give you this information. Yes, both vertices and edges are documents. So, let's see it. Select from person. You got some people. Uh, Luigi points, no, Joy points to, um, where's that, okay. 5910, that is the edge document. Let's try it. Select from 5910, and I get the edge document. If you see it raw, it's a JSON. And you can do update, oop, update that 
by record ID or by properties, whatever you want. Set, I don't know, uh, since equals, I don't know, year 2010, I don't know, month uh, six, day uh, five. Select from, um, oh, let's do E, all the edges. Okay, in this case, my friend of relationship has an embedded property that has three attributes. Let's see it row. Not this, not this, not this, this. Okay, let's enlarge it a little bit. No, I can't. Okay, so this is my edge. JSON, it contains a scenes property that contains an embedded object that has three properties, month, year, and day. Of course, I can have string properties, uh, number, uh, integer, double, big decimal, so absolute precision, uh, Boolean, dates, embedded objects, embedded lists, embedded set, embedded map, uh, link list, so lists of link, link maps, uh, links, so direct pointers managed at document level. It's the document, the, the, the model is definitely rich. Any other question? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.